Good morning, I hope you like the view back there, it's awesome. In this episode we're going to be doing steel, but we're going to be doing it in a little bit of a different fashion. We're going to go all through all the steel of the rest of the house, except we're going to go through it by parts. So today is like uh, May 20th, and hopefully we'll finish in a timely manner. As you can see, we've gotten some steel installed. Uh, so let's get into it, hopefully it's fun. Very well, so fortunately we're starting to move very, very fast now. That means that we're also doing the framing very fast and we are going to be catching up uh, the floor system all the way to this side of the house. Uh, the problem with that is uh, we need a lot of steel still and that uh, steel is blocking us from actually moving forward onto the second story of this side of the house. And uh, fortunately our steel uh, contractor, he came over over the weekend and uh, he got a bunch of uh, steel taken care of without a crane. I have these two guys that are amazing and uh, between all of us we actually lifted some of the steel. Uh, you might see it here shortly. It's a lot of fun actually. So, but more importantly, let me talk about this steel. We got this center post for the main house installed and the front post as well. Uh, this po these three posts basically that are in line will hold a massive white flange beam where we have a couple, uh, actually three white flange beam connecting to them. And we, once we get those installed, we will finally be able to install the floor system. Unfortunately, we still need the crane. So hopefully within the next two to three weeks, we will get that crane brought over, get this steel installed, and we can finally start moving onto the second story of the house. At least for now, we have enough work for a couple of weeks. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. Very well, beyond the steel that we installed in the main house, which is good, but uh, truly the more and more important post that we installed yesterday was that post right there, the vertical one. So with that one, we, it means we can fully finish the floor system here of the tiny house without having to worry about leaving space for the steel contractor to come back later and then do some welding and that kind of stuff. So we can finish it nice and neatly, tight, everything. Um, so I'm very, very happy about it. Uh, even if we, if we don't get the steel contractor to come over and build a main house uh, with a crane yet, at least we can start moving up uh, here and start building the walls. And uh, we might get him to come over again and uh, we can take care of uh, the roof as well without a crane. So it's a massive, massive progress. Uh, another thing is uh, here, you can see these two white flange beams. They are actually 20 foot apart. Uh, this is the sand area, so we can also start building this floor system as well. We call it the sand area because of this reason. Here, come along, let me show you. There's a tree in the way right now, but uh, that's why we call it the sand area. The view is absolutely incredible. It's gonna be the most beautiful view of the entire house. And uh, if it looks nice from down below, imagine from up above. Um, basically, this uh, white flange beam that we have here, we have an extended uh, eight foot uh, balcony. And so it's gonna be incredible. And uh, so why do we call it the sand area? Well, we call it the sand area because it'll be like a perfect place to uh, meditate and uh, do yoga. One of the last things we got the uh, steel contractor to do was to weld this uh, L bracket. It's a six by four by five sixteen cell bracket, and it's going onto this white flange beam, which actually turns out to be fully independent from the rest of the steel. Uh, this beam is going to be resting up there uh, along that wall, and it's going to cantilever two feet out. So that bracket right there is going to help us uh, connect a big final beam across uh, for the, uh, I guess, balcony. And then that big beam, that big beam is going to rest on the wall uh, over here. So that's uh, massive as well because we're able to finish that floor system.
are very happy that we finally have the metal done. We were able to finish the holes we had. Um, I also weatherproof all, all the surroundings from the metal. But honestly, it has been a never ending battle against weather in here. We tried to protect the subfloor. First we installed a uh, stego and then we noticed that water was getting under the stego so we could see everything was wet, we had to remove it. So then we decided to apply acoustic sealant and we did, but then we still got some dripping um, downstairs. So um, now we're trying zip tape. So we did the acoustic sealant and then we put zip tape on top and we are hoping that, that this is going to work. But honestly, I think that the only solution to beat the weather is going to move as fast as we can, get the second floor going, so this is finally covered permanently. Yesterday was a pretty intense day because we were supposed to get rain like at 9 a.m. and then it started to push at, until noonish. Unfortunately for us, it pushed until like uh, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. and it actually ended up going away until uh, at night. So, and that's important because the steel contractor won't do any work if it's raining. I guess he could get electrocuted. I mean, that's a good reason, I suppose. But uh, fortunately for us, we actually got a lot of work done, even though we had some slight issues to begin the day. The uh, crane was delayed a little bit, um, but we were able to accomplish this super long beam. It's probably the heaviest of the entire house. And then it's what we call the Christian cross right there. You can see the, the cross. And uh, with all this steel taken care of, we can basically finish the entire uh, first story or second story, if you will. Uh, floor system and from here on it's basically a lot of wood all the way to the reach beam. We have some steel steel uh, up on the roof and then I was actually surprised we were able to get this one this other uh, beam taken care of. As you can see over there it connects to a tab and this takes care of the uh, balcony of the Zen area. So it's pretty awesome we can actually start working here. So this is giving us tons of work. Another thing we actually did was we got uh, all these posts that we're probably going to be needing for getting to the roof. And uh, we are getting almost there. So amazing progress. The uh, steel contractor really, really pushed hard and he did a great job. So we are happy with that.
our steel contractor came over and he did uh, some work, some miscellaneous work, which is very, very exciting because if you know, working with the steel from the beginning has been a tremendous pain. Uh, first, finding a steel guy that would do the job. Then finally, we found the steel guy. He came over. We had the episode that you've probably seen um, steel breaking the bank. And uh, yeah, it does break the bank. Um, but then I called him like in February, January, like, oh, the, the snow is about to melt. And he's like, oh, I've retired. I don't do that stuff anymore. And, and I don't know, I really sweat bullets, basically. But fortunately, he came, he came through and he said, OK, I'll finish your job. So great work ethic. I'm very happy about it. And uh, with that, I think we only have one more day left for him to come over. And that will be with a crane to install the rich beams. Let me show you what uh, remains over here. So we have uh, three uh, white flange beams. We might actually not need all of them. I think uh, he mentioned uh, the steel guys made a mistake and, and they had to deliver again. And then we have this big C channel over here. That big C channel is going to go over here, which is some of the work he did this past uh, couple of days that he came over. So you probably see that C channel at an angle. It's a 412 angle. And that C channel over there at a 412 angle. Um, the C channel is going to be connecting over there and that's going to be forming a tiny little roof um, that's going to be all the way through the house. So now let's go upstairs and uh, let's show you the little details he finished. All right, so I'm up here now and uh, so let's talk about all the little details that he managed to finish. Um, as I already mentioned, kind of, uh, he installed the C channel. Uh, I was a little bit worried about DC channel because it's uh, quite heavy, but fortunately we were able to f uh, lend him our uh, scaffolding and his helper was able to hold it in place while, while he was welding. As you can see, he installed a couple tabs, one above, one below, and uh, one in the center with a half inch uh, gap in between. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's basically for the exterior uh, tiny roof. Up here you can see some of the work he did. I'll explain that on the other side. Um, he needs to finish cutting that uh, post over there so that the rich beam can uh, sit on it and uh, continue all the way to the end of the house. Um, over here, I don't know if you can tell, that uh, beam is cut at an angle. It's cut at a 412. Uh, it's that way because uh, we ran out of tabs, so next time he comes he'll need to bring some tabs. But at the end of the day, that will need to look like this. Um, basically, you see the cut the tab and that's basically put at a 412 technically that's the height of the roof right here and uh, we will be running at a 412 and the, both uh, top plates will be sitting above that steel connecting all the way to the reach beam he also managed to install that uh, bucket or connector i call it um, that's where the reach beam on the on this side will be, and those will be LVLs, so that makes my life easy because I can do it. He also put that tab that will connect to the reach beam. From there, we come down at a 412 angle, right here, like I said over there, the top plates will be sitting on top of that steel, and that will be the height of the roof right here. Uh, right here, uh, then we will just go onto a flat roof uh, to the front. So. Overall, quite exciting. Uh, we can basically finish uh, most of the house now. Uh, we can finish completely this side. Uh, next, what remains is we need to install the floor system over here. We're going to be collaborating with uh, some uh, big YouTubers. Hopefully you'll get to see them uh, or you might have seen them already. Um, we need to build that wall back there. And once that wall is taken care of, he can come and set the steel. Um, so overall, pretty exciting. Uh, I guess you'll see it right now in the next segment. For me, it will probably be another three, four weeks, who knows. Well, it's been about two months since I last saw the steel contractor, and it's been about a month since I started bugging him um, to come over and start to take care of the last pieces of metal, because we really only have one to one and a half days extra of work. And also, as you can see, we're getting very close to being done with the second story wall. So that, that also means that we'll be blocked if he doesn't come over. Um, well, in addition to that, we are also expecting some guests in the middle of September. So we're hoping we'll get something so that the guests can take the tour and see the, at least some of the roof. 
Uh, but that said, uh, he's been pushing back and pushing back. He's like, oh, it's uh, the weekend and family and and that's fine, I guess. Um, but the thing is, we're only one and a half days away from being completely done and you won't ever, he will never hear from me again. And uh, so because of that, I've been pushing him a little bit harder than I would, than I typically would in the annoyance level, if you will. Like every other day, third day, I ask him, when are you coming? When are you coming? When are you coming? So hopefully with the intent that he'll say, oh, I'm annoyed with this guy. I'll just go over and take care of this. And also I probably owe him a little bit of money. So uh, might as well just get done with it. Well, that said, he did say he'd come this weekend and start to take care of the final details. And uh, so let's keep our fingers crossed. ceremony. Now this ceremony, it's unclear where it comes from, but uh, some people say it's Scandinavian, some others say it's uh, from uh, the Native Americans. But pretty much what it means is that um, in in the past, you know, communities, all the people would come out and help people to build their houses. And when they were done, they would do a ceremony and they would do a party just to thank everyone that participated in the project. So nowadays it has a bit of a different meaning. It means that you are about halfway through the project. Mostly it means that you are finishing the exterior and you'll be ready to move on and work on the interior. Now, a very important item for the ceremony is this little tree that I have right here. So uh, the requirement is that it should be an evergreen. People usually call them the Christmas trees. And the, th the reason for this is that either Scandinavians or Native Americans, they believe that no structure should ever be taller than a tree. So by putting this one at the top of uh, the beam, then you are pretty much uh, like avoiding the wrath of the spirits of the forest. We're getting ready to do the uh, top off of the last beam. We're just waiting for the steel guy to finish his uh, welding. He'll probably come down, we'll strap it to the uh, crane and then uh, we'll put the flags and uh, sign it. The Christmas trees, of course, and um, we'll wish uh, this house uh, farewell. Well, not farewell, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> so yeah, uh, exciting stuff. Are you gonna sign it? Sign it? Yeah, the top of. Yeah. <laughs>
We are finally done with steel. You, you have no idea what a tremendous relief that is. But before I give you my final thoughts, let me show you one last uh, thing. Um, so mainly how we're strapping the steel in place. Right now we added those temporary blocks right there so that the steel doesn't slide to either side due to the wind and all that stuff. Then you can also probably see these uh, straps right here. Um, those are the ones actually required by the engineer. They look tiny compared to the rest of the steel. And um, I guess overall, once it's all said and done, it'll be fine. Just mainly because the roof will actually be bracing the ridge beam in place. But for now, they look tiny. I'm just going to be adding a second one just to make it stronger, just for safety. But they're not super expensive. But now, that said, let's go to a nicer place and uh, let's go over the final thoughts on steel. Cool, so I'm here in an awesome location. I'm here in one of the attics uh, of the house. And uh, you can see back there that we got our first uh, snow this year. So um, Here you can see the uh, ridge beam. It's already packed and ready to go for the, uh, for the roof. But that said, let's get into, I guess, the final thoughts because we will never be doing steel. So these are our thoughts on steel overall, forever. Uh, first off, uh, let's begin with the uh, steel contractor. To be honest, uh, uh, he did an amazing job. I mean, we're happy about everything he did. Um, I mentioned at some point in the beginning that he told me that he wanted to retire and that we were like maybe 30% through the project. I got really scared. We had given him some money. Uh, but at the end of the day, he came through. He was very honest. Uh, he was responsible. He came on weekends, which he didn't like to come on weekends. Um, so I guess 100% kudos to him. He did a, an amazing job. So now let's talk about steel. Working with steel, I guess it's fine. It's a little bit like uh, lumber and steel. They are a little bit like uh, water and uh, oil. They don't necessarily mix. Uh, so what that means is you need to end up using all these different tools to be able to work uh, both at the same time. So you, you might use uh, straps, additional straps to uh, strap the lumber, or you might use the ram sets, or you might use these uh, fancy tools to uh, ram set to the steel. At the end of the day, anything that, re that has steel requires additional work that ends up probably taking some, uh, let's say if you're very efficient, maybe 30 to 40% additional time, which actually ends up costing you additional money. That said, also steel is expensive. Um, lumber is way cheaper. You can actually achieve a lot of the, what you need with lumber, if you ask your architect probably, which we didn't. He actually asked us, what do you prefer to use, lumber or steel? And we were like, naive and said, oh, steel. <laughs> I wish I could go back and tell myself, oh, well, you're making a huge mistake. But anyway, we got it done, right? So that's all that matters. It's well done. We're happy about it. We're moving on to the interiors very shortly. OK, let's get to the business perspective of steel. Um, let's begin with, uh, I, in some videos I've posted, uh, some guys have mentioned, uh, what do you care if uh, steel takes more time? You're not paying for it. That's basically the paraphrase in the comment except they probably don't follow us because we do pay for it and that uh, we do know how much things cost um, so that said uh, there are a lot of inefficiencies in the entire process from like the architect structural engineer gc if you build your house normally so the uh, architect he only cares or he might only care about uh, making a beautiful house and uh, having all these nice big spans and all that stuff um, then it goes to the structural engineer and he only cares about making the house work, that it doesn't fall off and it can withstand the, the heavy winds and all that kind of stuff. From there it goes to the GC and he doesn't really care either because that's what the uh, uh, structural engineer gave him, so that's what he needs to build and so on and so forth. Uh, but when you are part of the entire process, you come to realize that this is basically very inefficient and it's very costly for the owner. And uh, unfortunately, typically the owner will not know um, about all these costs. So if you're one of those owners that wants to build your own house, uh, learn from our mistake, I guess, and uh, be wise and try not to use steel. Or if you have a lot of money, I mean, sure, go for it. Um, so yeah, um, we're done with steel and we're done with it forever. So we are very excited and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.